in this video we will discuss the problem count palindromic subsequences the problem says that will be given a string which will be of length n and our task will be to find the number of palindromic subsequences right so basically what will be given is we will be given a string str and in that particular string we have to count the number of palindromic subsequences right we have to count the number of palindromic subsequences but first of all what is a subsequence in a string right so suppose if we have a string like x y z and let's say w so subsequence can be let's say from this string i pick this x character and i pick this z character right so the subsequence x z x z can be said to be a sub subsequence of this original string right suppose if uh, this string was something like this if x was there uh, this was there and let's say we had a p and x also right this thing so in this if i choose a subsequence let's say i choose this x then i choose let's say this uh, p and after that i choose this x or or let's say in fact if i do this thing if i choose this w right so if i choose this x if i choose this w and if i choose this x again right this last x so in that case you can see that this particular subsequence of the string is nothing but a palindromic subsequence right so all such kind of palindromic subsequence all such kind of subsequence from the string which are palindromic in nature i have to count all of them right so that's what we have to do in this particular problem and since the answer can be very large so we have to return it modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7 now for doing this kind of problem the first prerequisite is that you should be very well aware about the longest uh, lis right uh, like uh, like uh, you should know the lcs that is the longest uh, common subsequence questions the category of longest common uh, subsequence and also the longest palindromic subsequences so if you are well aware about those concepts then this problem becomes a cakewalk or a very easy problem for you right so if you have not done those kind of problems in dp then you should try them out as well now if they give you a string let's say as abcd right so if a b c d are given so in this particular string you can see that all the four characters are different so basically if i consider the individual subsequences that is just a or just b or just c or just d so in that case all of the single characters alone are palindromic in nature right because single character is palindrome so i'll write the answer here as four for this particular case because if i consider a b c or anything else then no other subsequence seems to be palindromic so the answer for the first test case will be four now if i check out the second test case here so the second test case is double a and then b right so if we have uh, let's say double a and then b so in that case what we ha will be having is we'll be having this single a then we'll be having the second single a then we'll be having b and then we'll be having a and a as well right so the count here will be four as well and these are the counts like uh, first single a second single a and the third character that is b and the fourth uh, is, uh, palindromic subsequence will be nothing but the two a's together right so here for this case also the answer will be four so if we have to consider for all the subsequence rest right so if you have to consider for all the possible cases right because in this case if you will see so you have to consider for all possible subsequences you can say right or you can say that we have to consider for all possible cases and whenever we have to consider for all possible cases then the concept that comes to our mind is nothing but recursion so the first thing is that we can solve this problem using recursion and while we'll be solving it using recursion so you can observe that we will be having a lot of sub overlapping sub problems in that case we can memoize it using the dp approach right so what will we do suppose if uh, like if uh, we pass initially suppose in this case if we start writing a little bit of code here so what are the things that we will be requiring so first thing is that we will need the length of the string so let's say int uh, like we if we if you remember how do we solve the problem of lcs and lps so if suppose a particular string is given let's say the string is something like x y z and then w okay so in that case if the first and the last like we point one character uh, one pointer i at the starting one pointer j at the end and we check if they are the same then what we do is we move our pointer to i minus i plus one and j minus one that such that i and j moves here and, and then we keep on checking right but if they are not the same then also we do something different so suppose that if in this case if they were the same right if they are the same in that case what we do we will simply first of all uh, in this case what we'll do so if uh, suppose that i is equal to j so in that case our approach will be different because if the like if suppose that we are just standing at the last character suppose we had a string x y p uh, q r w something like this okay and suppose that our i was standing here and our j was also standing here right so if there is a single character that we have left in our subsequence like if this, this is a single character only that is this and i and j, j are pointing both so in that case we'll simply return one because we'll be counting this kind of a subsequence right and other than this what are the basic cases so other base case can be 
that suppose if i becomes greater than j right suppose if j is standing somewhere and i is standing here so if i and j cross each other so this will this should not happen so if i is greater than j in that case we will simply return a zero indicating that okay it's not possible and other than this if suppose that the dp of ij is not equal to minus 1 right so if it's already calculated in that case we will simply say that we will return that answer right so first of all let's write these basic cases that we have just discussed now right so what we'll be having is first of all we'll find the size of the string so size of the string is nothing but str dot size right once we get the size of the string so we'll have uh, the dp declared for us because in this case we know that we have, if we are considering for all possible cases so there will be a lot of overlapping sub problems which we can uh, tackle using the dp approach right so we'll declare a dp which will be of size n okay and the second dimension will also be of size n so we'll declare a vector of again a long long let's say we will declare it as long long basically because the answer can be uh, long range right so we, uh, in that that's why we'll declare it as long long okay so after we have declared this particular vector so we'll declare it as long long here as well so long long and then end okay now after this part so we are basically declaring the 2d dp here uh, and then n and then minus one okay so after we have done this so we'll write our recursive call here so let's say we do what we return the recursion here and we simply pass the string str that has been given to us we pass the dp array as well we pass initially zero that is i will be pointing to the first character and j will be pointing to the last character of the string right and this particular recursive function will uh, return the count of all possible subsequences that can be there right so how will we write uh, this further so first of all let's consider the base cases and then we'll see for the other cases as well so i'll write uh, like long long int uh, recursion and then first of all i'll be passing the string str right after passing the string str we'll also require the 2d vector so vector of uh, vector uh, then long long int right so we'll pass the dp array as well here after we have passed the dp array so what another thing that we require is nothing but the i and the j so int i comma int j is what we'll be having right and what are the base cases in this particular question so first of all since i also need to take the mod so i can declare the mod as 1 e 9 plus 7 that is 10 to the power 9 plus 7 uh, because we always will be required to take the mod and if it happens that suppose that i is equal to j so if i'm if uh, i is equal to j basically as i mentioned suppose if we have something like uh, a b c d right a b c d e something like this if we have so if our i is standing here and our j is also standing here so if i is equal to j in that case there is a single character and that will always be palindromic in nature so we'll simply return a one from here right that is what we are going to do so we'll simply return a one now what is the other base case so if i is greater than j right if i and j cross each other in that case we'll simply return zero indicating that okay the answer is not possible right other than this if we are using this uh, if we will have overlapping sub problems and we are using dp so if the dp of ij is not equal to minus one if this particular state is already calculated in that case we'll return dp of i and j right that is what we will do now comes the case when we'll consider all the other cases right so suppose if it happens right uh, suppose if uh, there is a base case, like if there is another case like uh, in this case uh, suppose that we have x uh, then we have y then we have z and then x right so if i is pointing to this point uh, at this uh, character and j is pointing to this character so if str of i and str of j is the same right if they are the same in that case what should i do if they are the same in that case i'll count one to my answer right i'll increment the answer by one and what i'll do is i'll try to recall the recursive function i'll pass the a string right i'll pass the dp array and i'll call it for i plus one comma j one time what i'll do is i'll key like uh, basically uh, i'll call like uh, if they are the same right so if they if they are the same uh, if they are the same then my approach will be different if they are uh, not the same then my approach will be different right so if they are the same in that case what what will i try to do if they are the same then one time i'll try to move my i and keep my j as the same if they like other than this what can i do is i can do one other thing that i'll try to keep i as the at the same pointer and i'll try to move j by one so j minus one right so these are the cases and i'll count this particular sequence that is this they are the same so i'll count this as a palindromic sequence by adding one to the answer right so if they are the same that is uh, what i'll try to do so if uh, the str of i suppose uh, is equal equal to str of j so if the uh, if the ith character uh, from the starting is equal to the jth character from the end in that case first of all uh, i also need to store the answer because if i am storing it so next time it, the answer will not be minus one so in that case i can basically say that i'll simply return from there right i'll not call that recursive fun function again and again so what will i do so what will i do i'll i'll simply call the recursive function i'll pass the string str i'll pass the dp array as well okay then i'll pass i plus one comma j right this is what i'll be doing 
plus what I can do is uh, I will uh, I'll write again the recursive function here so one time like uh, basically uh, keeping uh, like this the overall answer will be nothing but one plus the recursive call for i plus one comma j then other time it will be nothing but the str like passing the string st or then uh, dp then i comma j plus one right uh, j minus one sorry okay after this part is done so what we'll uh, be doing here is uh, after taking the addition we'll be simply taking the modulus at every step that we have been told because the answer can go out of range uh, out of the long long range as well so we'll take the mod right so this is what we'll be doing but if they are different right so if they are different then we will have a different approach for solving it right so if suppose that uh, we have a string like suppose if we had x, y, and z, right? And my ith pointer was pointing here, suppose, and my jth pointer was pointing here, suppose, right? So you have to think. So you can think that, okay, what we'll be doing here is if they are not, uh, like if they are not the same, right? So if they are not the same, then what we, what uh, what can we try to do? So in that case, we can say that, okay, we can call recursively for i plus one comma j, right? One time plus the answer from i comma j plus one right this is what we'll be getting like basically one time like if they are not the same then after that uh, if this is not the same so then i'll keep i as the same g move by j here then i'll try to check for x and y right and sim like uh, basically i'll try to check and check for x and y keeping i uh, like first of all let's say if i keep i as the same and i j move j by one right so j minus one if i do right so this thing now another thing that i could have done is like uh, i could move my i by i plus one and j remains the same so i could have checked for y and z the number of palindromic subsequences in the string y and z right but if i count right so if i'll count so see you can observe this part that in this case y will be counted like y one counting for here will be y because you can observe that in this particular string x y y will be a string which will, like y will be a subsequence which will be uh, palindromic so one count will be coming from here one count for y will be coming from here so that means we are counting this y two times whereas actually it is coming one time only right so in that case we need to subtract something as well and what we'll subtract is we'll subtract simply y basically what we can say here is we can say that we'll subtract nothing but recursive of i my i plus one comma j minus one comma the string str right so basically in this case if we are passing this particular subsequence now so the number of uh, palindromic subsequence from this string plus the number of palindromic subsequence from this string that is nothing but i comma j plus one right and this is nothing but i plus one comma j minus one right uh, sorry uh, what i uh, what i should have done is i uh, i comma j minus one right uh, now this is one subsequence if it was x y z right so if i was pointing at x and j was pointing here so one time i'll count it uh, like uh, one time i'll uh, count the number of palindromic subsequence in this then i'll count the number of palindromic subsequence from i plus uh, like uh, basically i plus one keeping the j as the same right and then i'll be subtracting what because i'm counting y two times so basically i'll subtract nothing but i plus one comma j minus one now uh, basically recursion of i plus one comma j minus one that is the number of uh, palindromic subsequences that i'm getting for the th from this particular substring right because x y z so if i move x and y both so this is string so basically this will be one and if i'm counting this y two times now basically i'll be counting several uh, occurrences multiple number of times so if i want to count them exactly once so i'll have to subtract this particular thing from it so that's what we'll be doing here now let's try and implement this thing here as well so what i'll be doing here is i'll simply say that okay the dp of ij here here will be nothing but it will be the recursion of it will be nothing but the recursion of uh, str comma dp comma i plus one comma j okay plus the recurs recursive call for str comma the dp comma i comma j minus one right uh, basically one time moving my i another time i'm moving my j right and then i'll be subtracting it okay i'll be subtracting it with the recursion of uh, nothing but i'll pass the str okay i'll pass the dp i'll pass i plus one comma j minus one because uh, if i'm i'll be counting several uh, occurrences multiple number of times multiple number of times so for that i need to subtract and after this part is done right so after we are uh, done with this much part so what i'll be doing here is i'll be taking the modulo directly here so let's uh, take a modulo here directly so i'll take this much as mod right and then after this i can add the mod here as well right because i need to keep this inside the range so this is nothing but the modulo arithmetic and after that i'll take the mod again right so this is what i'll be doing here and after we have calculated this particular uh, answer for dp of ij for this particular current state i and j uh, so i'll simply return this particular dp right so that's what i'll be doing here now let us try and compile this code to see if there is any error in this particular code okay it works on the samples let's try and submit this code as well so you can see that our solution was able to pass all the test cases and now talking about the time complexity of this code so the time complexity for this approach 
will be nothing but order of n square because we are uh, iterating through the string and uh, overall time complexity will be order of n square space complexity will also be order of n square because we are considering a 2d dp which is of size n cross n so that is what we are doing here if you understood this question make sure to hit the like button and comment down understood as well thank you for watching this video make sure to subscribe the channel as well thank you